What's up guys, Celestra here again, bringing you another guide. This is the legendary bout to be a hero, so in this you would usually be using Sephiroth and Cloud, and yeah, it's fairly easy compared to every other one you've done so far because Sephiroth is actually really powerful. I'm just going to show you a quick little guide before we get into it as how Sephiroth works, because he is actually really strong. Compared to Zack, he does have a lot more abilities, but he is fairly straightforward compared to Zack because you need to learn how Zack's combo works to charge the charge the level 3 up and Sephiroth has this insane dodge which dodges most things. So I'll show you how he works. So basically Sephiroth's mechanic is this aura charge you see in the bottom left. He can also just press R1 and go into like a parry stance which is this and you press square to parry and then that also gives you a counter attack attack afterwards. But basically what you want to do with Sephiroth is you want to make sure you build up... Let me see if I can get away from this. Ow. <laughs> So you basically want to build up this gauge right here. So once you've got this, you can do a bunch of different attacks. So your abilities, Zanshin and Hell's Gate, they are more powerful when you press triangle. It also enhances things like your limit break. So if you have this bar full, when you do Octoslash, you will do Octoslash Prime as well and basically get more damage. The, the normal attacks can also be enhanced as well. So when you press square and you do his full combo, he will get Teloric Fury at the end and that builds a bunch of ATB. So if you have him and Cloud hasted up and you use Teloric Fury, you're pretty much going to get two bars straight away with Sephiroth, which is great. And for example, with his abilities, one of the hardest fights I always find in these is Bahamut, I think it's Rising. Um, his wings are actually really hard to destroy because most of your abilities just don't hit them for some reason because the wings are so big or their hitboxes are really weird. With Sephiroth's Zanshin Gate, if you have his triangle ability, so if you press Zanshin Gate now, and then you press triangle which is Zanshin Rising, that basically insta breaks the wings, which is amazing for that fight because you can pressure him and stagger him so much easier. And you can avoid a lot of attacks with this. I wouldn't recommend parrying with Sephiroth because it is a bit weird compared to the other characters because you have to press square at the right time when you're in the parry state. So for example, if I can maybe see it against... So it is, it is technically better because you're attacking at the same time as doing it and then you can counter attack with a triangle. But I wouldn't recommend it. So that's kind of a basic thing on how to play Sephiroth. And now we'll get into the actual battle so you guys can see my very first run. Like I said, all these runs you guys have seen so far are pretty much my first run. So you can see how sloppy it is. And that you can still be sloppy and still actually do it. So I'll get that up just now and you guys can have a watch. I'll talk through it just to kind of explain what's going on as well. Right, and here we go. This is the start of the, the 10 wave battle that we're about to do with Cloud and Sephiroth. <clears throat> So we're going to do the usual haste everybody up, just so we can get a bit more ATB and damage. And then we're just going to focus on using Sephiroth for the most part and having Cloud kind of help Sephiroth in the meantime. Like I said, this one's a lot easier than, than Zack's one, because Sephiroth is really, really strong and Octoslash and Octoslash Prime are pretty broken. <laughs> and as you can see, Sephiroth's dodge is also very broken, considering I just dodged all of that while dodging into Titan. But same sort of strategy for most of the bosses. So for Titan, when he uses his focused ire, his shield will come up. And then you can damage the Earth or an Aegis, Aegis more. So at the moment, we're just kind of laying into him. Just the normal tactic. You could potentially just use your limit with Cloud, because I've actually got his uh, got a Dameron on. And you can strengthen Cloud with doing things like Sonic Boom. You can put the dark side on, you can also put the plasma discharge on so that you're getting more damage while you're doing these fights as well. Any little bit of damage helps in these fights, so put whatever you want on. Also, if you can, I don't think I've done it in this fight, but I did it with Zack, put the bravery and faith buff on. I can't remember what the material is called. I think it's empowerment, and that will allow you to basically buff up Sephiroth and Cloud at the same time. So they'll do a bit more damage depending on what you do. So magic is... Faith and Bravery is physical damage. So yeah, we're just laying into the shield at the moment, and then once this is all gone, we'll be able to pressure him. And similar to Zack's one, this actually gives Sephiroth infinite MP for a certain amount of time, and also levels up Cloud's Limit Break. So now we have level 2 Limit Break with Cloud. And we can just cast spells as Sephiroth if we want to. As we know, Titan is weak to Aero magic, but for the most part, I just lay into him with physical attacks. So as we can see, his shield has went down here, so we're doing more damage to the Earthern Aegis, and now he's pressured. 
So this is the time to lay into him and get a lot of damage done. Hasting everybody back up again just because it's ran out. So with Sephiroth, you can use the arrow magic or you can kind of just get everybody back up to full health like I'm doing here. I was being a little bit cautious, but this one is a lot easier than Zach's. So focus thrust just getting pressured. Close enough to being pressured, so just attack. Cloud's limit break. And then switch to Sephiroth and just use Telluric Fury, which is this cut right here when you press triangle after the full combo. And then Hell's Gate, like this. Press triangle afterwards. Hell's Gate again. Triangle afterwards again. As you see, Sephiroth is pretty damn powerful. And we're basically at the, the limit break again, so the synergy abilities. So use that again just to get Cloud his level 3 limit. Anytime you have the opportunity, make sure Cloud has his level 3 limit. Because as we know, finishing touch is actually one of the most OP moves in this game. When it comes to things like Odin, when you have that at the end, I'm pretty sure that saved my bacon because I got Zantetsuken like 30 times in that fight and I still managed to survive. Because that's the good thing about having Sephiroth because he actually has re-raise. So when he has the infinite magic, make sure to just cast re-raise if you're worried about dying in one of those fights. Because you're not wasting the MP because you've got the infinite MP buff on. So you'll just be able to cast re-raise, get those characters back up if you do somehow die. But the first fights shouldn't be too much trouble, it's just the later fights as per usual. So basically once we get the shield off again, Titan's just going to go down. Because he will be staggered again like he was last time. And like I said, you can use Zanshin in the air, so you can dodge away, you can cancel the animation, which is great. And you can be at a distance when you're hitting enemies with it, which is awesome as well. Because you're getting your, your little pip from your synergy ability, and also getting some damage at the same time. And if you have his bar built up, then you're going to be doing the extended version, which does more damage. Shield is almost broken. This was a lot quicker with Zack, but like I said, Zack is a little bit more complex with his um, his buff that he has for his his extra attack. So now we've got him staggered. Just do some damage, get your bar belt up. Just use whatever you can to do damage here. Just get him pressured ASAP because we want to make sure we two cycle him. We don't want to have an instance where I had, where he had like the tiniest sliver of health and he put that stupid shield on himself. There we go. So build Cloud's bar up, do Infinity's End because that's one of his strongest moves. Get on Sephiroth, use his Hell's Gate. And there we go, Titan's down. Right, and on to the next enemy. This is a fairly easy one. It's just a big ogre. I'm pretty sure it's weak to fire like most of these things are. You can parry a lot of the attacks and just lay into him. That's literally all, the only thing I can say. Because he doesn't have any shields like Titan does. He's just a big a big beefcake. And here I'm trying to kind of do the parry mechanic. Like I said, this was my first try trying to do this. So I was just testing out all the Sephiroth's mechanics. The parry is really good, but I didn't know how to use it at this point. So... I end up just going back to normally attacking it. Because as you see, I've, it's only been like 15-20 seconds. And it's already got a chunk of its health off. And Sephiroth's dodge is pretty OP, so you can just dodge out of most things. With the right timing, of course. It's not that OP. Yeah, we're just doing the normal thing. Getting all the bars built up. So we can get the, the synergy ability going. See, this is why I like to have this pause function when you're using the abilities. Because they're still moving, but they're moving at like the tiniest, tiniest rate ever. So it gives you a bit of time to think, like, what's the best thing to do here? Right, and with the synergy ability off, now we've got access to infinite MP with Sephiroth. So we can make sure to heal ourselves up and then just blast it with magic if we really wanted to. Or you can just practice with the, the actual attacks, like I kind of do. There we go, that was 9999 damage just from that one Blazaga. 
And he's pressured now, which is great, because that means that we can stagger him. And Cloud completely misses. Well done, Cloud. Reminds me of when I was fighting Bahamut, and he, he just completely missed. So this thing does take a little bit to stagger, but at least the pressure bar is rising. And you can just keep parrying the thing while you're in um, in this mode. In the Punisher mode. And he's quite close to being staggered. If he did get staggered here, he'd be pretty much dead. He's so close. So close to being staggered. Come on. Just one little bit. There we go. Now Cloud has his limit, so just throw it out. Switch back to Sephiroth, just do your Zanshin or Hell's Gate, whichever one you want to use. And there we go, another one down. It's good that they give you a little reprieve with like easier bosses in between. Right, and now we're on to one of the most annoying ones. Phoenix is fairly easy, but it's the fact that you can't alter any of the material on Sephiroth, kind of like with Zack. So Sephiroth doesn't have what Cloud has, where Cloud can just literally absorb every bit of damage that Phoenix does, apart from physical damage. Like I said, the builds are going to be at the end of all these videos, as they usually are. But, yeah, the most of the time you're going to have Elemental Fire on, or Elemental Fire and Ice, so you can absorb Fire and Ice. So when Phoenix does the Rebirth attack, Sephiroth's going to get hit, because there's no way to avoid that unless you can kill Phoenix before it does that, which is pretty hard to do considering it throws it out right after you've killed every enemy here, and then it's almost instant when it does it. There must be a consistent way to do it, because... It's just a kind of BS move otherwise. So just get yourself all buffed up. I use Cloud to kill the bomb here because Cloud has elemental fire magic on. And for some reason Phoenix is taking me for a ride around the map. Trying to take me away from the bomb. So we're going to use Cloud for one of these fights basically solo as well. Because we don't want Sephiroth to get damaged. But it's a couple fights after this I think. Either that or it's the next fight. But I'll let you guys kind of know the fight when we get to it. So we've only got one more thing to kill. Which is this last little thing once it summons it. So for this thing you can just use a, a strong attack on it and it'll get pressured. Just like this. And then what I do is I just use the synergy ability on it just so I can get the infinite MP with Sephiroth. Because we'll need to heal. And also Cloud gets his next level limit. I feel like the best way to maybe do this after looking back at the footage is do a lot of damage to Phoenix before you pressure it, but before you stagger it even, because while it's in the pressured state, it doesn't actually do anything really. So if you can maybe do like a lot of damage before you stagger it, or maybe stagger it and then use stop, because stop actually stops the, the stagger bar from going down, you could probably kill it before it gets back up. I believe it also works on Phoenix, so you could probably try stop here, but like I said, at this point, I'd cleared all these before I actually found out that stop works on the on the actual stagger gauge, which is something that they f I feel like they should probably tell you at some point, because I don't remember seeing that in any tutorial or anything in the material slots or anything like that. So, yeah, it's a bit strange that that's not a mechanic they tell you about. So Phoenix, quite close to being dead here, and it's going to use Rebirth Flame, so that's going to bring a bunch of enemies back and potentially kill Sephiroth. Or get Sephiroth down to like a small amount of HP. So, not too bad. And Sephiroth's got infinite MP so he can just get a couple attacks off and then cure himself if he wants to. Also a tip as well, be careful about switching too fast between characters. I actually had this happen when I was doing my hard mode run on stream the other day. Where that happens, Sephiroth doesn't actually manage to get Kuraga off because the switching between the characters too fast cancels the cancels the actual command. Which I had that happen when I was fighting Sephiroth at the end of the game and yeah, ridiculous. Messed me up so many times. But just make sure you're not switching too fast. So Sonic Boom on this Arch Dragon, because that's actually really strong against it. 
And then this thing's weak to fire, so if you want to, go ahead and use fire, but I'm just beating the crap out of it. And then we're going for Phoenix again. As far as I know, Phoenix doesn't do Rebirth Flame again, thankfully. So it gives you a, a big opportunity to kill it here. So heal yourself back up if you're too low because you obviously you only get half your HP back when you go to the next round. And just make sure you're not wasting too much MP because we want to make sure we go into each consecutive round with full MP. So you can use half but just try not to use too much. I actually love this animation, it's so cool. There we go, on to the next one. This is the one we're going to be soloing mostly with Cloud, because this thing does... It does a couple other attacks that aren't fire, but 90% of its attacks are just fire-based. So with Galvanizing Flames, anybody that attacks it will get hit by fire. And Sephiroth doesn't have elemental fire magic on, so he's just going to take damage. You can potentially just stand at distance and blast with the, the long distance move Sephiroth has when you hold square. But I believe you still get hit because it shoots a little fire bullet at you. But yeah, just lay into it with Cloud. You've got all the abilities that you need with Cloud. You've got the enemy skill material, so you've got Sonic Boom, you've got um, Static Discharge. No, nope, it's not called Static Discharge. I keep forgetting that. It's called Plasma Discharge. So yeah, use Plasma Discharge. Use Dark Side if you want to. Just to empower your attacks a little bit. You can use your limit if you really want to. Sonic Boom to strengthen yourself as well. And every time it attacks, we're basically just getting fully healed, so you don't need to worry too much about getting damaged here. It is also weak to Lightning, which is why we put uh, Plasma Discharge on. Once Sephiroth gets a couple bars, if he does build it up, you could potentially throw out a spell. But yeah, just lay into it with Cloud, it doesn't take too long. And you can switch to the Prime mode, which I do here because I always forget about this mode. just makes you a little bit stronger and makes your moveset a bit quicker. And different as well, which is kind of cool. So anytime it does this, try and get into it so you can get a full heal off. I actually try Rancid Breath here just to see kind of how it works. And then I actually noticed that this stops it. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. But it stops the pressure bar as well. So the pressure bar will not build up. Which I didn't notice until just now. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, this boss is fairly straightforward. You're not really going to take any damage whatsoever. So this is another one of those bosses where you can just relax and just wail on it. it like I said, it does do a couple physical attacks. So that tornado one that it done. And then like it scratches you every so often. That hurricane one, sorry. That hurricane move will hit you for like 4,000. But then it'll heal you for about three and a half, four thousand when it does the fire magic. So from the from the breath, we've actually poisoned it, so it's taken continuous damage as well, which is really good. And we try it again just to see what else it'll do. So that actually put Petrify on it, which I was I was very fairly shocked here because I'm from playing Final Fantasy and other Final Fantasy games throughout the years. When you ever fight a boss. 90% of the time they are immune to stop, petrify, literally anything that's uh, a negative effect. Which is why I was very surprised that stop actually works on bosses. And it even stops their, their stagger gauge. So if you've staggered them and you want to do like a fair amount of damage to kill them, so one cycle them, you can just stop most of the bosses. I don't think it works on every single one, but try it out and see what, what works. Because you're going to have haste on cloud anyway, so you will have the stop magic. And now that we've staggered it, it's pretty much dead. Easy as that, because Sephiroth actually gets a chance to attack. Right, onto one of my least favourite bosses, which is Kujata. This thing is just so tanky, it's annoying. And the fact that you need to cast spells on it to take away its elemental affinity so it doesn't use tri disaster i don't actually do that in this fight because i'm trying to save on mp so he does actually manage to do tri disaster but because we have elemental fire and ice magic on cloud the fact that we just absorb most of it so we don't get hurt for that much sephiroth i'm pretty sure dies from it but then you can resurrect him which isn't too bad so just put on the usual plasma discharge dark side sonic boom 
basically anything to strengthen Cloud and then just lay into it with as much power as you have. You can also just do the tactic of switching to Sephiroth and just using him because he's a lot stronger. But I was just basically building up the, the pips for the synergy ability. And then as soon as I've got that, I'm just making sure Cloud has a second limit break. Sephiroth has infinite MP for a little bit and then we just go from there. And like before, Sephiroth isn't going to absorb any of this. So you need to make sure that he's far enough away from Kajata when he does his attacks. Whereas Cloud can be right in his face and he'll just heal. And the cool ass synergy ability again. I love this move. There we go. And now at this point, this is where you should really be casting the elemental weakness on Kajata. So for example, he's in fire at the moment, so you cast ice. I believe you only need to cast the the version twice, so it doesn't need to be like a strong spell. It could just be like two bl uh, two blizzards or two blizzaras, or I think he's also weak to another element at this point because he does two elements. But just make sure you remove at least one of the elemental affinities, because otherwise you will get tri disastered. And if you do not have the build that I have, most of them are probably going to be dead unless you have some sort of damage mitigation. And I actually just realized there how, how far away Sephiroth was and still managed to get a health. It's crazy how long his reach is. So at this point I'm just laying into him as fast as possible, trying to get him staggered, but I believe he maybe does try disaster to me before he gets staggered. Not 100% sure. Yep, here we go. Try disaster. And like most limit breaks with summons, or most finishers with summons, it does it pretty instantly, so it's really hard to stop it. I'm trying my best here to, get, to stop it before it does it, but no way I'm stopping that. So watch Sephiroth's health and watch Cloud's health. Yep. Sephiroth dead, but Cloud's still very much alive. Because he has that elemental magic on. So make sure you just get, get Sephiroth back up. And then you can get Cloud a couple more of the little pips of the synergy ability. And then you can cast... Well, get the synergy ability off and then Sephiroth will have infinite MP again. I'm trying super hard not to stagger him at this point. Also, that's an amazing thing that works. So if he does the stomp, you can actually dodge into the air with Sephiroth and completely avoid it. So at this point, just get all your damage off as fast as possible. Octoslash as well, and we also have the triangle move, so we'll do Octoslash Prime, as you'll see here. This is the first time you're doing it, so I'm confused as to how it works. But he didn't actually do it, so I think you potentially need to be on Sephiroth when you're doing Octoslash, for him to do Octoslash Prime. But now, once Sephiroth gets one more, no, it's once Cloud gets one more bar, we can do the Synergy ability. There we go. So we'll have infinite MP again, and Cloud will have his third limit break. Yeah, this fight is probably one of the ones that takes the longest. Unless you're using the, the magic to deal damage to his elemental weakness. But I was being too cautious. Even though it ends up killing me a couple times because of the try disaster. So at this point you'll want to get the fire and the lightning magic off. Either one. Just to make sure that he doesn't actually cast try disaster again. Yeah, so he's weak to blizzard and uh, arrow magic. So sometimes it's easier to cast arrow. Because you know how Blazaga stays in one place. Aero does stay in one place as well, but it seems a little bit quicker. <clears throat> Just get Sephiroth's bar back up and get the ability to cast as fast as possible. Yeah, so it hasn't taken his elemental affinity off yet. Which is why you should use two of the same ability. So either Blizzard Blizzard or Arrow Arrow.
There we go. That's the one you want to use. So you need to make sure you use two of the same element just to get at least one of these things off, and then we have a chance to pressure him again. So now I actually know how Kujata works. So if I ever do any of these builds again, I'm going to completely destroy this stupid summon. And finally, he's dead. And now we have another easy one, thankfully. So this is basically time to recuperate and get more mana back. Uh, why do I call it mana? More MP. Get your MP and your HP back and just lay into this thing. So this thing is weak to fire magic when it has its shield on. And that will pressure it as well. So just use the same buffs as normal. Haste. Get Sephiroth to get some bar, all that sort of stuff. Try and get the synergy ability off so you can get infinite MP and you can just cast fire magic at it. This is where I start to realize Zanshin is really good. <laughs> so Plasma Discharge, Dark Side, all that stuff, all the buffs as per normal. Trying to parry with Sephiroth, I was like, not having it, I'm dodging away. Yeah, so as you can see, Sephiroth's just normal attacks do a lot of damage. But you need to make sure you have hit it a few times to keep that aura charge. Time to use the synergy ability so we can get our MP infinite and Cloud will get his second limit. There we go, pressured. Easy as that. So we want to get it staggered and then we can pretty much one shot it. Yeah, so charge up that, use Teloric Fury because that's one of his best moves for building ATB. And since we have inf infinite magic now, just hit it with as much magic as you can. Now it's staggered, do the same thing. Get Cloud to use his limit break. And then switch back to Sephiroth and just do whatever else you can. Attack until you have Teloric Fury on the bottom left. Use that to build ATB and then just use Faraga again. And we're half health, so we'll get half our health back. So we will be fine for the next fight. Right, and now we start getting into some of the harder ones. So Alexander, not too difficult, but... If he judgments you, you're pretty much dead as well. So make sure that we get these arms broken as soon as possible. Get Sephiroth's attacks strengthened like this. Like I said, you can use Zanshin in the air. So when he's doing stuff on the ground, we can avoid most of it. Apart from that, because you need to actually block that or parry it. Um, even if you're in the air, that still seems to hit you unless you're really high up. So get the arms broken as fast as possible. Get the synergy ability up as well so we can spam magic if need be. Best thing to use, I've noticed here, is Hell's Gate, the Empowered version. Just make sure not to get hit by the Tracking Beam, because that actually does a fair amount of damage. And Sephiroth can just avoid it pretty easily. So, Hell's Gate on whichever arm you want. Use the Empowered version, and then just attack, just to stop it from doing that. And then we've got the right arm to go. So make sure you get this before you get him pressured, so you can get the, the second limit break with Cloud for more damage and you'll be able to cast spells with Sephiroth as well. So either a healing or buffs or whatever you want to do. And there we go, he's already pressured. It's funny because I used to think Alexander was one of the hardest ones in this, but he's actually one of the easiest because he can't move. But yeah, do not dodge with Sephiroth there because you will get hit by that stupid grand laser because for some reason you go directly in front of it. This is where it can get annoying if he puts this stuff on the ground because it will linger there and you'll just get hit while you're standing on it. Same with this stupid rotational laser thing that he does. But he is weak to Thundaga, so with Sephiroth, cast that on him to get some extra stagger and damage because Zack doesn't actually have Thundaga, so that's why this is a bit easier with Sephiroth. And then once he's staggered, all this crap on the floor goes away, so you can actually just lay into him as fast as you can. Hmm. 
And then we've done that. Get ready to spam as many Thundaggers as you can with Sephiroth. Make sure everybody's hasted up again. And he's pretty much one cycled. Funny thing is, at this point, I'd forgotten that he actually heals his limbs again. I thought he was doing judgment in a panic. But yeah, just do the same again. Break the arms. Like I said, Hell's Gate's better. I'm just doing Zanshin here just to be a bit kind of more cautious. Because you can do it in the air, whereas Hell's Gate takes you down to the ground. And if he's put any of that crap on the floor, you're going to get hit. If he does Light Pillar, like I said with the Zack video, just ignore it. Just break the arms ASAP. Ignore the Grand Laser because it's very easy to avoid. Just get those arms broken. There we go. And basically once we've done this, he's dead. You just want to make sure you're not getting hit with too much crap on the floor. So if you're in the air, that's perfect. But then moves like this bring you back to the ground, which is really annoying, which is why Cloud died here. He did have Reprieve on, which is that thing that keeps you alive, but this stuff on the floor will continuously hurt you. So just get him up. Don't panic if this happens, just get him up as fast as possible. He will continue to take damage while he's in that, so just make sure that you use the stronger rays and dodge around in the air with Sephiroth just like this so you can avoid all the, the crap that he's thrown out. And stay above the floor. And you can attack while in the air with Sephiroth with Zanshin. And he's trying to do Divine Punishment, but he's basically dead, so we don't need to worry. Alexander down, not much more to go. Right, and we get another break with a nice easy boss, King Zhu. So Cloud will basically just absorb most of the damage from this because he has the elemental fire magic on. And I've I've seen some people struggle with like breaking the wings so they might get insta-killed. But with Sephiroth, all you need to do is hit it a few times so you get your aura charge. And then just back up and use Empowered Zanshin because that will always break the wing. Just like that. And then just hit it again just to get your bar back because it can hit you a few times. And then it's pressured and then you just do the normal thing. Get the stagger bar up, get it killed. And the wing tactic also works for Bahamut like I mentioned earlier. You want to make sure you break Bahamut's wings with Sephiroth. Just make sure when you're fighting Bahamut that you have haste on and you keep Sephiroth kind of either one bar or two bars. So when he does do the wing attack, when he's absorbing the particles, you can break the wing straight away with Zanshin. So we're just doing our aerial combat, it does Swan Song again. This move is so annoying. Aerial Onslaught also works, but with Cloud obviously, he's not really going to be taking any damage on like Sephiroth inside the fire. See, so normal Zanshin doesn't actually break the wings. It has to be the empowered one. But fairly easy. Just You get staggered pretty easily, so just use whatever you want. Get them down as fast as possible, and we're just going to get this over fairly fast and get into the next fight. Just make sure it keeps Sephiroth topped up, because he isn't immune to fire on like Cloud. Because Cloud can literally just run out of this circle <laughs> if he wants to. The only thing that's going to hurt Cloud is the physical attacks or just the normal tornadoes that it summons. This can be a little bit dicey with the fact that Sephiroth doesn't have immunity here, but it doesn't last too long and then it starts doing Swan Song again, so just break the wings like you did before and then we're all good. And you should be able to stagger it after this next wing break. See, this is why I don't really use triple slash on these enemies, because it's the same with Bahamut. It doesn't hit the wings. Yeah. 
So it did actually manage to do its death attack there, but funnily enough, Sephiroth dodged it. <laughs> it shows you how crazy his dodge actually is. But now it's pressured, all we need to do is just keep spamming our attacks. I would have done Cloud's Limit, but for some reason he didn't do it here. Or he doesn't have it. No, he does have it. What's going on? Well, either way, King Zoo's basically dead. <laughs> didn't need to remain staggered to die. And we still have basically all of our MP and our health for the next fight, which is Bahamut Arisen. This is always the scary one for me when I first played this. I was terrified whenever I got to this fight because I was like, I'm never going to pass this. I'm never going to get to Odin. I'm never going to be able to do this. But with Sephiroth, fairly easy. You break the wings every time he does it and you can just pressure the hell out of him. You can also use the, the synergy skills too. I always forget they're a thing because like in the Zack fight, it stops the particles from being absorbed and also pressures Bahamut at the same time. And if you have any of them attached to you, when you see the debuff in the bottom right, that um, not that one because that's silence. But if you have any of the debuffs in the bottom right that are the little particle effect looking ones, that also gets removed when you use your synergy skills, not your abilities. It says you can pressure him with synergy abilities as well, but I've never been able to pressure him unless it does it after a certain amount of time. But you can always pressure him like this, as you can see. And here we go, here's the wings. So get your aura charge back up a little bit and use Zanshin on whichever wing you want. And then use the empowered one, there you go, broken already. And then do it right away on the other wing. And already pressured. This one pressures him for way longer and you can basically get him to stagger point at this point. And just buff yourself up with whatever you want while you're doing it. Just getting away from that because I don't know how to parry effectively with Sephiroth yet. Go make sure to use Sephiroth's one. Cloud's one is more of a counter, I believe. So I would just use Sephiroth to get that. And Sephiroth has one bar here. So make sure to get two and then back up, use the empowered Zanshin and break the wings again. There we go, pressured again. Stops him from also getting to his next form, which is great because you don't want him to get to his other form. If he gets to the Giga form, you're pretty much dead because he will just keep casting the Giga Flare all the time. That's what happened um, one of the first times I fought him on the, the Ruler of the Outer Worlds one. Once he got to Giga Flare mode, I was just screwed because he would just keep casting Giga Flare. That can actually be parried, but I wouldn't recommend trying to parry it with Sephiroth. Just get away from it and then break the wings. I'm just dodging to get kind of in front of them because I know how weird these wings can be in regards to hitboxes. So Cloud has a second limit, Sephiroth has his Octoslash limit as well, so get those cast. And when we're on Sephiroth this will show you the Octoslash Prime as well. There you go, Octoslash Prime, get back to Cloud and just damage him while he's doing Octoslash Prime. Pretty much half health at this point. And Sephiroth has the infinite MP as well, which is great. So I'm just casting Mana Wall because Sephiroth's the one that we need. So just get your bar back up quickly. Then back up and use the, the Zanshin. So I was testing here to see if it actually works. And it does seem to work behind him as well. Even from this angle. So Sephiroth is amazing for this fight. Whereas if you try and use Triple Slash on the wings, it doesn't work. If you try and use Braver, half the time it misses. I feel like that's something they maybe need to fix. These fights are way too overtuned anyway. And I would... I don't know if I'd be annoyed if they've nerfed it now because I've done it. But I feel like a lot of people do struggle with these. And even me showing people how to do it and tips on like how it works. 
it's still really really difficult to do it consistently because they're so long so you're you're trying to play perfectly every single time that you're doing this and it just you can't do that you're human you can't play perfectly every single time so it's went into neo drive mode here which is one step towards giga flare so it won't do giga flare here it just does a few different moves but these are fairly easy to avoid with sephiroth which is good Soren Slash, you can parry as well. So I'm just buffing Sephiroth here, because we need to make sure he gets two bars. And with Cloud, we can actually pressure it a bit with Focus Thrust while it's doing this. So he's doing the wing thing again at this point, just getting close get the bar and then use Zanshin. There we go, pressured again. This is Cloud's time to get him fully staggered. I was just getting some bar with Sephiroth here just so I can make sure he lives. I don't want him to die here. So focus thrust, focus thrust, there we go. Now it's time to kill him. And there we go. You're on to the last boss if you reach this point. And we all know the last boss is Odin, which is a pain in the butt, because if he does actually get Zantetsukin off, you're you're screwed. But like I said, if you have the infinite MP buff, you can re-raise just to make sure that you can get back up afterwards, because then you'll have a limit break because you've been killed. And you can just hit him with the limit break and he'll get pressured. Another thing a commenter um, pointed out on my Zack video was I wasn't sure why I was getting, I think it's called Reprisal, where if you use an ATB ability, Odin will hit you back and basically get a hit off on you, so you'll end up getting closer to the Zantetsukin. When you see this thing here on your hands, the little purple aura, which is really annoying because it doesn't state that anywhere when you look at Odin's assess. So when you assess Odin, it doesn't tell you this, but the little purple mark on your hand here, if you use any sort of ATB ability towards Odin, so if I used like Braver or Focus Thrust or something right here, he would reprisal me, so he would get a free hit and he would cancel my ATB ability. Anybody with the purple hands, that happens to, apparently. That's what one of the commenters said. And I didn't know that until now, because it doesn't tell you anywhere. Unless I just skimmed over what his actual thing is. So I'm getting Galahorn's warning right here, which is not good. If you get this at the start of the match, you're pretty much screwed. Unless, for example, right here I use Cloud to use his limit to hit Odin, which would basically stagger him. But the fact he's hitting me so many times here, that is very bad. Yeah, because if you guys don't know how Odin works, basically, the more he hits you, the closer he gets to Galahorn's warning. And as soon as he does that, the more he hits you again, he's going to do Zantetsukin. And, like you see here, this will be basically insta-KO. I tried to re-raise both of them, but I think Cloud's already got re-raise on him. So this is very bad, you don't want this. But Cloud's Reprieve activated, so he's still alive, but he's not anymore. But since he had Reprieve on him, he's gonna get back up. He almost fell unconscious again because Odin just keeps hitting him. I always recommend, after playing against Odin so many times now, I always recommend if you have the Got a Dammering on, use your limit on him straight away. Because that will pressure him straight away. And then you're, you're basically in front of him in terms of attacks. And he will most likely never do Zantetsukin as long as you do enough damage to him. But yeah, this, like I said, this fight is the very first time I did it, so it was very, very dicey. 
And at this point, Sephiroth has the infinite magic, so if you want, and you're scared that he might do Zantetsukin again, make sure you re-raise everybody again. This move, you need to make sure you're on the opposite side, so look at it carefully and dodge to the other side really quickly, because otherwise you're going to get separated. So get across to this side, make sure they're both here. So Cloud's already been re-raised, let's re-raise Sephiroth. And just lay into him. If you can parry, parry because that actually helps because he doesn't actually hit you at all. And then you'll be able to hit him a bit more afterwards. So I try and parry as much as possible here. I am good at the parries in this game but not amazing at them. Some moves are just like a little bit too delayed to like consistently get them. So he's doing Galahorn's Warning again. If he does that again, just use your limit break. Because like I said, this is the first time you're doing this, so I'm still not sure how to stop him from doing this. But if he's doing that, just use your limit break to stop him. Because it'll basically do so much damage that it'll knock him into the pressured state. And then you can pressure him and you'll get a lot more damage on him. So that he won't be able to Zantetsu can you right away anyway. You'll be able to. He'll probably still do it, but it means that you're a little bit closer to killing him before he kills you. So this is the one that he does. So when he's a little bit on the back foot, he will do Sleep Nears Fuhrer, and this is where you want to pressure him. And Cloud got knocked unconscious again, because why not? Not like I'm already dealing with enough in this fight. And he died again. This is what I mean. Odin's so quick. And then he hits you when you're getting back up if you have um, if you have re-raise on. So at this point I'm thinking, if he goes to Zantetsu can me again, I'm dead. So I'm trying to get the bar up so I can use the synergy ability, so I can get infinite MP. Because I know I'm not going to do enough damage here to kill him. So if you guys get into this state, then this is kind of how to fix it. So use the synergy ability, get Sephiroth to get some bar. Make sure Cloud uses haste so we can get everybody back to like full speed. Get Sephiroth a couple bars, and then use re-raise. Because we know he's going to try and cast Zantetsukin again, so make sure you re-raise everybody. There we go. Now we've got protection in case he does Zantetsukin again. And at this point, I would recommend using Cloud's Limit Break. I don't know why I was holding on to the Limit Break so much here. I think it was because I was so panicked. But that will basically freeze a character. So if you want, you could protect the other one by using the Limit Break. So for example, if I was on Cloud there, and he's using Temporal Imprisonment, and I use my Limit Break, he will not be able to freeze me. I really hate Odin. <laughs> the fact that he just hits the characters from so far away. There we go, Galhorn's warning again, so... I don't know why I'm holding on to the limit break so much. If I used it here, I could have been fine. But like I said, I was panicked, so yeah, Zantetsukin again. So here we go, we're gonna get killed again. But we have re-raise on. Like I said, I probably get Zantetsukin about five times in this fight. So it shows that you can still win this even if you've been killed like three or four times. To be fair, it is a pretty sick finisher for Odin. I love Odin's Zantetsukin.
I've always loved it in every Final Fantasy game. It's just so badass. It's good that it doesn't stop the re-raise, though. Because if any of you have played um, Crisis Core, there's a boss in that that when it kills you, it takes your re-raise off. So you can't actually get back up. I'm surprised they didn't do that for Odin, because Zantetsukin is supposed to be an insta-kill. I'm so glad they didn't, though. Because that would have made this fight annoying as hell. But if you knew what I knew, and you actually knew to use your limit breaks, then he would actually be dead by this point. Because we have a free limit break at the start of the fight because of the, the God of Dameron. So that's my biggest tip for you guys. If you're fighting Odin, use your limit break as soon as the fight starts. Obviously buff yourself first, so use haste or whatever you want to use. And then just run up to him and use your limit break. And that will get him into the Sleep Nurse Fewer state because you're ahead of him in attacks. And then he will get pressured. And then you can do as much damage to him as you want. All that good stuff, and he won't do Zantetsuk into you about 30 times like he does to me. But like I said, it's nice so you guys can actually see my very first run, get my tips from me actually doing it, and basically make your own run from this. The build for Cloud will be at the end, but it is good to see when someone has like a, a run that is successful, but fails so miserably at the same time. It's just so you can see that you don't actually need to be perfect in these fights in order to win them. Like, I die like four or five times in this fight and still manage to do it. But when you actually have knowledge of how this fight works, like the fact that if you limit break right at the start, that he will be pressured immediately, and that you have these little purple hands on you, you instantly get hit if you try and use an ATB move. Things like that are things you need to know. Also, do not dodge right in after he does that, because I've done that many times and it still hits you. Alright, so he's doing Zantetsukin again, so we, we're going to get back up anyway, because we've got re-raise on. How many Zantetsukins this? I feel like I should put a Zantetsukin counter in the corner. It still looks just as sick, though. I'd happily watch this cutscene over and over again. I can't wait to see what the Knights of the Round materia is right, like in the, the third game. I really hope they keep that. Same with Hades. Right, so Sephiroth is doing his limit here. So that gives Cloud a chance to kind of get some ATB and attack him at the same time. And he's basically almost staggered again as well. And as you see... I'm, I don't know why I didn't notice this, but he does Sleep Nurse Fury right after you do a limit break because it does so much damage and it basically does so many attacks that it puts him on the back foot. So like I said, that's my biggest tip. Use your limit break straight away and then just lay into him as much as you can to get as much damage as possible. So he's... Very close to being dead here. But I'm still a little bit panicked that I might get Zantetsukin again. So I'm going to try and get Cloud one more bar. So then we can do the synergy ability and get the magic and get the... Yeah, basically get the magic and also be able to re-raise ourselves again. Just in case, because you never know. So Kuraga first, just to keep everybody alive, and then re-raise, because that is like one of the best moves in this game. So Temporal Imprisonment is going to imprison Cloud, because we were on Cloud for the most part there, but that's fine, because we, we want Sephiroth to be able to re-raise anyway. And Sephiroth can evade most of this, he just can't counter it. Well, he can, but I'm not good with the parry at this point, so yeah. And I still have the summon up, which I haven't been using. I totally forgot it was even there. <laughs> I don't know how I forgot it was there. But yeah, it's just to show you guys as well that I'm not using the summon and I still managed to do it. So he did reprisal on Sephiroth there because Sephiroth has the purple hands. And he just insta-killed Cloud. Amazing. And we got Galahorn's warning again right away. 
because he's doing so much damage to us. So I do actually summon Phoenix here because I realize that I have it. But the thing is, I only summon Phoenix so I can use Re-Raise again. Because Sephiroth doesn't actually have the, the MP or the bar. Well, he does have the bar, but he doesn't have the MP to use it. And Phoenix can actually do it by itself, but it requires two bar of ATB. So we use the summon abilities Re-Raise on Cloud. And I think Cloud manages just to get it on this time. Unlike in the Zack fight where Phoenix was a bit too slow. And since we managed to get that off, Cloud will get back up as well as Sephiroth. And we are both at half limit, so since he kills us, we get both our limits at the same time. And you guys know how much these limits deal damage, so I just throw them out as soon as I get back up and Odin dies. Because Odin will try and attack you straight away as soon as you get up. So yeah, make sure to throw out your limit because then you're invincible while doing it. And while he's doing that, I do a couple of attacks with Sephiroth to get the the charge up. And then we do this just to make sure, but he's dead anyway from finishing touch. But yeah, that is to show you how sloppy you can be in the Odin fight, but still manage to do it. As long as you're using re-raise with the infinite MP, you'll be fine, okay? I know it is a tough fight. It's probably one of the easier ones because Sephiroth is really good. Zack's one's way harder than this, in my opinion. But hopefully this has been helpful, guys. I'll show you the build at the end just so you can get through all this. And I probably will do some of the other challenges just so you guys can see if you haven't done them already. And same with some of the mini games, I'll have some guides up for them as well in case you're still struggling with them. But yeah, I'll get onto the build just now. Right, for this build, it's Umbral Blade, Cetrin Bracer, Got a Damarung, Magnify Healing, Steadfast Block, Precision Defense, First Strike. Enemy skill, because that helps a lot with like your, your buffs and things like that. HP up, revival, ATB assist. You could potentially put re-rise on, because as you saw, it was pretty helpful during that battle. Because if Odin gets to the point where he Zantetsukins you, he's just going to keep doing it every like few minutes. So yeah, make sure you have something to get each of them back up. And like you saw during that battle, make sure to use your synergy abilities so that you can get Sephiroth to have infinite... MP and then you can cast re-raise on both of them or use Phoenix and then you've got a free re-raise but you need to use two ATBs so ATB assist so for when you use repeating commands so like triple slash or the sonic boom the ally will get some ATB which is really good dark side more strength basically more damage for the enemies magnify time just so we can get both people sped up it runs out quicker but it's better to get both people sped up quicker Elemental Materia and Fire and Ice, so we can absorb Phoenix's thing or whatever else during the, the run as you saw. The dragon basically couldn't hurt us because we had fire magic on. But yeah, that's really it for that build. This video has been ridiculous. You guys will be seeing this before I've actually done the, the Zack and Cloud one. So hopefully I get that done a bit easier as well. But my god, doing these challenges, they need to tone them down for the next game. They're actually ridiculous. <laughs> they they shouldn't go on for about an hour at a time and also shouldn't send you all the way back maybe halfway through like i feel like it would be a bit better if halfway through like at five you would have a checkpoint but no apparently not no but yeah with that done this would be the last one being done and then you're literally that's you've done all the hard mode vr challenges you would only have hard mode to do in the the main game if you haven't done it already and I've only got the piano thing to do for Johnny. So I will be getting that done after I've done all these and then that will be the platinum for me. So hopefully this will help with the platinum guys because these challenges are fucking ridiculous. Like I actually hate it. I don't usually swear in my videos but oh my god. They're going to make me lose my hair. But yeah, hopefully it's been helpful. You guys have a great day and let me know how you're getting on towards your platinum journey. Bye bye.